guys, it's Say back here. Welcome back to my podcast. Today, I'm going to be talking about dreams, what they are, why they happen, how they happen, and a lot more. So, let's dive into this ocean of dreams. First of all, before we learn about dreams, we have to know what they are, or at least just a brief explanation of them. Well, it's really simple. Dreams are just small stories or images which our brain generates while we're asleep and then shows them to us. Okay, now that we know at least just a simple explanation about dreams, we have to answer another quick question if we want to learn about them. And that question is, what happens when we sleep? Now, we all know that dreams always happen when we're asleep, apart from daydreaming. So, what exactly happens while we're asleep? Well, there are five stages of sleep, which I'm going to explain right now. The first stage is called light sleep. Light sleep is when you're just starting to nod off, but you're still completely awake. And you're just tossing and turning around the bed. The second stage is medium sleep. Medium sleep is when you start to fall asleep and you're not aware of being awake because, well, you're starting to fall asleep now. And in addition to that your heartbeat and heart rate drops and your breathing becomes slower then we have deep sleep which is stage three in stage three your brain starts to energize and it starts to remember a lot of things and like kind of sort them into long-term and short-term memory of everything that happened today and also give your body a lot more rest then comes stage four Stage four is like when you're completely asleep and it's a very, very deep sleep. It's really hard to get people to wake up from this stage of sleep. And some people also dream in this stage. But the stage where you dream the most is the stage which is the last one. Stage five, which is REM sleep. REM, R-E-M, stands for rapid eye movement. It's when your eyelids are closed, but the eyes are still moving around because they're seeing the dreams. Then, while you're sleeping in the REM stage, this is also the final stage of the cycle. And no, you don't, this isn't the last stage. It isn't like when you wake up. This is just the last stage of the cycle because it repeats again and again and again. So in the REM sleep stage, you actually start to dream and that's when all of the dreams that your neurons have created are seen by your eyes. Okay, now that we've answered what happens when we sleep, I think we're ready to dive deeper into dreams. Now we're going to answer the question, how do we dream? Now. This is kind of a complicated concept, but it's actually really easy. So basically, when you're asleep and your brain is doing the REM cycle, well, neurons in your brain, which are kind of like tiny sparks of electricity, they are zooming around in nerves, which is what neurons are in, and they are in a way communicating to other neurons and stitching together little pieces of a dream that will soon be seen by your closed eyes. And well, yeah, and there's a myth that when you sleep and your body gets rest, your brain also gets rest. But obviously we've just debunked this myth because we just knew that our brain in stage three of the REM cycle is energizing and in a way exercising. So yes, sleeping is a way to exercise your brain mentally. Okay, so now that we know how we dream, how about we answer why we dream? This is kind of a difficult concept and there's no really known justified answer for this, but there are a lot of theories made by scientists and doctors. One of the first theories is that dreaming It helps you remember things longer and it helps you stimulate your brain and energize for the next day. Another theory is that dreaming can actually help you in a way indirectly with your real life problems. Now this might sound really really confusing and it might sound like it's not the truth 
But trust me, once I explain this, it's going to make it a lot easier to understand. Well, we will have nightmares at least once in a while, right? Well, the last theory about why we have dreams is kind of related to nightmares. Now, if we have a nightmare about, let's say, someone chasing you, it shows you that you need to confront a fear of yours. So this is indirectly, in a way, telling you one of the problems that you might have in life. And there's a lot more examples of this. If you have a dream of being late to class, or being late for anything for that matter, it shows you that you're being really overworked and you need to rest a little bit more. And another way that dreams are, in a way, helping you is, for example, when you have a dream about failing anything or not studying for something. This shows you that you have a fear of failure and you're not so confident with yourself. So, yeah, dreams can actually help you with the real life problems. But why are they so completely weird and so random? Like, you could have dreams about a monkey flying in space or an astronaut in the water. And those are just really confusing about why you have them. Well, there's no real reason for why you have them, but again, scientists and doctors have a theory. Neurons, well, if you listen to my podcast about neuroplasticity, you would know that the brain sorts things into long-term and short-term memory. Well, some of those things are kind of randomly picked and just stitched together in a really random way to make a story or an image or a dream that your eyes then see while you're asleep. So some dreams are actually really common and some are very unique. So this explains why that happens with humans around the world. Now, you might be thinking, I have definitely dreamed a lot more than the dreams that I remember. Well, that's because there are some dreams that you just can't remember. Now, nightmares, like I was talking about, they are very thrilling and scary. So you tend to remember those more. But there's another way on how you can remember even good dreams. Well, the thing is that when you're sleeping, you have the five stages of sleep, of course, like I told you in the REM cycle. But you can dream in any four of these stages of sleep. So the thing is that if you wake up right after your fifth stage, you tend to remember the dream that you had more and it gets put into the long term memory. But if you, let's say, are dreaming in stage three, then you tend to forget that dream and it gets put into short term memory. So that's how people tend to forget and tend to remember more dreams. But that's mainly because of your sleeping patterns. Speaking of sleeping patterns, here are some habits that you could use to make sure that you don't have bad dreams. Well, one of them is to have sleeping habits and wake up at the same time every night and go to sleep at the same time every night. For example, if you go to sleep at nine o'clock, make sure you do not wake up at three or five and have a good time of sleep so that you don't tend to have a lot of bad dreams and make sure you keep this consistently and wake up and go to sleep at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. Another thing you could do is sleep with a stuffed animal because with them you feel like you're not alone even though you can't feel them while you're asleep but it gives you a sense of not loneliness. Another thing you could do is read a book before you go to sleep, but not horror books. Because horror books can fill your mind with a lot of scary things, which of course can give you bad dreams. But if you read a good book, like an action novel or um, a fairy tale, well, then your mind is filled with happy thoughts and it's easier for it to stimulate. A way it's not easy for it to stimulate is if you have devices right before you go to bed. Because using devices before you go to bed, not only does the blue ray affect your eyes, but it also dissimulates your brain and it makes it harder for you to rest easier. Another thing that you should avoid doing is eating because that can disrupt your digestive system 
and make it harder for you to sleep for the right amount of time. Okay, now you know all about nightmares, but it's time to answer the really big question. Now, it's a very weird question and it might sound like I'm going crazy, but I'm gonna ask you, do you think that nightmares or bad dreams can actually be good for you? Well, a lot of you might be saying, no, there's no way. I mean, they disrespect, they, they disrupt my sleeping pattern and of course they scare me right out of my bed. Well, yes, but these nightmares also tell you about problems that you might be having in real life and in some situations also how you can face them. For example, if some person in school or just someone in general is teasing you or making fun of you, dreams can help you in a way simulate what you can do in those situations without anyone actually knowing and without news spreading. So yes, bad dreams can be good for you, but of course, not all the time, because like you might have said, they do, dis they do disrupt your sleeping patterns and they are definitely way too scary for me. <laughs> okay, now that we know all about nightmares, good dreams, and practically all about dreams, I'm hoping that you've learned something new and I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. And if you have, make sure you leave a review and listen to my other podcasts, which I'm sure you will enjoy. But until then, stay tuned. And this is Sai signing off.